Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Genesis. Good morning, faithful listeners. Happy Friday. Thank you for tuning in this morning to the P40 Ministries podcast. And uh, this, of course, is your host, Jen. And uh, we are going to be discussing the rest of Genesis chapter 43 today. So let's just jump right in because this is such a fascinating chapter to me. I just love Joseph's story and his reconciliation with his brothers. So let's go ahead and talk about Genesis chapter 43, verses 24 through 34. So let's read these 10 verses. Grab your cup of coffee and let's go ahead and start reading. The steward brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet. He gave their donkeys fodder. They prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves down to the earth before him. He asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he yet alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. They bowed down humbly. He lifted up his eyes and saw Benjamin, his brother, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? He said, God be gracious to you, my son. Joseph hurried, for his heart yearned over his brother, and he sought a place to weep. He entered into his room and wept there. He washed his face and came out. He controlled himself and said, Serve the meal. They served him by himself and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves. Because the Egyptians don't eat with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. They sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled with one another. He sent portions to them from before him, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. They drank and were merry with him. So now the brothers are in Joseph's house, but Joseph isn't there yet. Joseph was probably still busy with his workday, so he had his butler take the brothers into his house. Now the brothers were freaking out because they didn't know that this powerful Egyptian official was Joseph. They didn't know that it was their brother. And they were scared because all of a sudden they're in this powerful Egyptian official's home. They had not gotten off on the right foot with this Egyptian official, or so they thought, because Joseph was testing them and doing all this stuff to test his brothers and eventually um, bring them all together. And so Joseph was acting, honestly, very wisely. He was testing his brothers, pretending like he didn't know them and pretending like he thought they were spies and just doing all sorts of stuff. All of a sudden, the brothers are in Joseph's house. They are freaking out because of uh, the money that had been in their sacks the last time they had gotten food from Egypt because of the famine. Joseph had put that money back into their sacks to kind of take care of his family. It wasn't to do anything mean or cruel to them, but rather to just uh, give them their money back. And so they're freaking out. They think that because of that money, they're being brought to Joseph's house that he can overtake them, potentially kill them or make them into slaves. So they're talking to the butler and they're like, we got this money like in our sacks last time we came here. But the butler, who was kind of in on the whole thing because he was basically the head of Joseph's household. So Joseph would have put a lot of responsibility on this steward or this butler. And so this butler says to the brothers, he's like, well, you know, it's fine. Just think of this as a gift from your God. He says, I received your money. Don't worry about it. It's all good. So this kind of eases the brothers' minds. And Simeon, after that, Simeon is brought back out to them because Simeon was in prison for who knows how long in 
an Egyptian prison. And so Simeon is brought out to them. They probably are excited. They're probably happy that, you know, they're not going to die or become slaves and that Simeon is brought back out to them and that Joseph or this Egyptian official official in their minds does not think that they are spies anymore because Simeon is back out with them. So after this, the butler ends up washing their feet and he also, uh, brings them food for their uh, donkeys. So the butler is taking care of them, getting them all washed up, making sure that they're presentable for Joseph when Joseph comes back home to eat lunch at noon. The brothers heard that they are going to be eating with Joseph. And so they prepare the gift that they had taken with them, which was all those delicious nuts like almonds and stuff like that, and some honey from the land of Canaan, and also some fruit from the land of Canaan. So they're bringing all these gifts to Joseph and preparing them for when Joseph comes home because they heard that they were going to eat lunch with him. And so it says, when Joseph came home, they brought him the presents, which was in their hand into the house. So in other words, they gave their gifts to Joseph and they bowed low to the ground before Joseph. So all of those dreams that Joseph had at the beginning when he was 18 years old, all of those dreams about his brothers bowing low to the ground before him are coming true. And I bet when Joseph was 18, he never expected his life to go in the direction it has it had gone in. Joseph is seeing these dreams come to fruition right before his very eyes. And so his brothers are bowing low to the ground. Joseph is still pretending to be a stranger to his brothers. And he says, he asks of their welfare. He says, is your father well? The old man that you talked about last time you were here, is your father well? Now, of course, Joseph is being nice to his bro his brothers, of course, but he's probably very curious. Is his father still alive? And his brothers say, yes, of course, our father is still alive. And they bow down again, humbly, it says in verse 28, they bowed down humbly. So they have such a change. You know, these brothers, they, I think they were rather arrogant before. I think they were very arrogant. And now they are humbled because of Joseph, because of everything they had done, all the stupid decisions they made, they were very humbled because of all of those circumstances. But it says that Joseph finally sees his brother Benjamin bowing there, his own mother's son. And it says that when he saw his brother, he was filled with emotion because he hadn't seen his brother for 20 years. And probably 20 years ago, Benjamin was potentially just a baby or a very, very young child. And Joseph didn't have a relationship with him, but Benjamin was his only full brother. So he sees Benjamin and it says that his heart yearned for his brother. In other words, he wants to just run up to him and hug him. He missed him. He hasn't seen him in so long. He is overcome with emotion because of his youngest brother. And so it says that he retreated. He had to go and find a place to cry. He was so emotional. So it says that he searched for a place to cry. So he goes into his own room. He shuts the door and he cries and cries for a while. And probably the brothers are like, okay, what is happening? And they're waiting around for Joseph to come back. So it says that finally Joseph washes his face. He gets up, he washes his face and he comes out and he controls himself controlling himself he says serve the meal so he's acting once again like he's this official and so the servants all serve the lunch but this part here is very interesting in verse 32 it says they served joseph by himself and them by themselves in other words the brothers by themselves but the egyptians who ate with them they ate by themselves because egyptians don't eat with hebrews that is an abomination to the Egyptians. This is a very, very, very important verse, especially when we're going to learn more about the conflict between Egypt and the Hebrews later on. The Egyptians were insanely racist. I was actually reading a little bit about this, the racism in ancient Egypt. They disliked foreigners so much 
that they wouldn't even eat imported food or imported wine. Everything had to be made in Egypt. They were insanely racist. They didn't like the Hebrews. They didn't like the Greeks. They didn't like anybody. I don't even know it was Greeks. Yeah, I think Greeks were around back then, but they didn't like anybody. This kind of shows why some of those problems started happening once we get into Exodus in in a couple weeks. We're going to find out why some of these problems started happening because the Egyptians were so racist that they didn't want the Hebrews in their nation. It was actually an abomination to even eat with the Hebrews. This was a perfect place for God to send Jacob and his family. And you might think that's kind of crazy, but it absolutely was because as Jacob and his family settled into Egypt later on, there was not going to be a lot of intermarriage in Egypt. So think about that because the brothers and their children and their children, probably eventually, if the Egyptians were not super racist, they would have eventually intermarried the entire Canaanite clan would have been assimilated into Egyptian culture. There would have been no Hebrews anymore. It would have been the ancient Hebrews. You know, we would have known about them from ancient history. They would have been assimilated into Egypt. It's just a very fascinating thing that God did that you wouldn't really think about is that God was protecting the Hebrew nation in its own way by allowing them to still be Hebrews and not intermarry with the Egyptians. This was the perfect place for God to send so that they were protected, so that they did not intermarry while they were being protected. And God used Joseph to do all of this. And it's just a fascinating thing. The Egyptians are very racist. They don't even want to eat with Joseph, even though Joseph is basically the second in command. Even Joseph is not allowed to eat with the Egyptian rulers, but they do think that Joseph is above the status of the Hebrew brothers. So Joseph is eating all alone and the Egyptians are eating all alone that served him. His brothers are eating all alone. So they divided them up. They weren't allowed to intermingle. And so it says that Joseph sat before them, probably in his own little throne thing. He ended up seating the brothers by age (laughs) and their brothers are like freaking out they're like how did this happen how could this possibly happen there's 11 brothers here and he got the ages of us all correct I mean what is that the chances of that are like one in a million I don't even know what the chances of our of that is but of course Joseph knew but the brothers didn't understand that and they're freaking out because the firstborn was at the head of the table Reuben and then Benjamin was on the other side and yet he had gotten it right and so the brothers are like this is really odd so after this it says that the the food is getting served but it says that Joseph served Benjamin five times as much food and drink as the other brothers. And this was another test that Joseph was doing. He was testing to see if his brothers would react to that. They didn't like that kind of, uh, you know, favoritism before when Joseph knew them 20 years ago. So he's seeing how they're going to react, but they don't do anything. The brothers just eat, drink, and be merry, pretty much. That's basically what it says. It says that Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs, but this is the test and they passed it. It says they drank and were merry with him. The brothers passed the test. They were no longer upset that Benjamin was receiving all of those portions of food, probably because they they were used to this (laughs) with their father. I am sure they were kind of used to Benjamin being favored. So what is it if some other guy is favoring Benjamin, whatever. So they're all happy. They're all eating, they're all drinking, and they're all enjoying their time with Joseph without even knowing that it is their brother. And so they're probably relieved. They're probably feeling happy. And they're probably thanking God that they are protected, that Benjamin is protected, and that Simeon is back with them. So we will discuss more about this on Monday. So join me then at 6 a.m. and we will discuss Genesis chapter 44 and talk more about Joseph's stories with his brothers. But friends, happy listening and God bless.